how to become the best time trialer you can be. We spend a lot of time here at MK Roadmaps to help you become a better time trialer, whether it's by analyzing the exact inputs for a specific track, that's how the channel got started, by visualizing world record holders' feedback, by split screening world records with our trademark bullet time way of comparing splits, by analyzing even just the history of a single shortcut within a track, by linking you up to our favorite Mario Kart YouTube channels, and by talking to the pros in our brand new podcast, any way we can possibly think of. Now today we'll do something different. Instead of going over a specific track in its own individual combo setup, lines and strats, we asked a whole bunch of top level time trialers, how does one get good? We compiled all the advice, tips and tricks we received in some kind of list. And while I expected we'd receive a whole bunch of hard to grasp technical stuff, this following list may surprise you in its simplicity and or priorities for a time trial student. Okay, so this is me again from the future. I just listened to the whole list uh, and I must say, get your Mario Kart lingo bingo chart ready because you're gonna hear the words soft drifting and tech a lot. <laughs> Let's start off with all the technical stuff. Number one is more of a general advice. Learn the basic mechanics of whichever game you wish to time trial or speedrun before you start diving into the more in-depth tech that any game has to offer. Whether it's Super Mario Kart, Mario Kart 64, Wii, Deluxe, or any other game in the Mario Kart series. It might sound cheesy, but these basic driving mechanics will serve as the backbone for everything you do. For example, if you want to do a shooter game, get used to the weapons the game has to offer, where they work best, how they can be used effectively. Not only get used to these basic movements, but also its limitations. Now, apply to Mario Kart. Mario Kart Wii has wheelies and automatically charging mini turbos, while Mario Kart Double Dash does not have wheelies and has manually charged MTs. In the case of Deluxe, get used to the basic steering and also more importantly, drifting. Learning drifting is what's ultimately going to open the door to getting better at the game, so it's something to really get a feel for. Don't worry about track-specific tech just yet, if you're only just starting. Number two, commit to your drifts and no stick wiggling. I was wondering if this should be merged with the next one, being soft drifting, but I kept them separated as there's just a little bit of nuance and a distinction between committing to your drift by not wiggling the stick too much and soft drifting. That being said, number three, soft drifting. Once you learn the basics of drifting, you may have noticed that you're not able to charge those MTs as fast as what you see in world record runs. This is because these players utilize a more advanced technique known as soft drifting. In MK Wii, MK8, MK8DX, there's two speeds at which you can charge an MT, either slowly or quickly. You're probably aware that if you turn the control stick all the way in the direction you're drifting, you charge the MT quickly, and you also drift as tight as possible. And if you turn the control stick in the complete opposite direction from where you're drifting, you charge the MT slowly, and you also drift as wide as possible. Soft drifting is a technique that allows you to charge the MT as quickly as possible while not having to drift as tight as possible. Once you have basic drifting down, this is the next logical thing to learn as it directly builds off of those fundamentals. You would then need to get used to this since you're probably not going to be used to putting the control stick at the positions or angles needed to soft drift optimally. Number four, more tech, neutral drifting, glider MTs, delayed drifting, some more track specific tech and so on. Number five, watch the world record and copy the combo. Number six, join the community servers like MK leaderboards, for example. There's a lot of people who are willing to help out new players and provide them with a lot of resources. Number seven, pick your favorite track, get a feel for the layout and then go more in depth, whether it be more advanced tech that applies more generally across the board, like soft drifting, or learn some more track specific tech, like the Electrodrome world record shortcut method, for example, which we'll be covering later in a episode of Mario Kart University. Now this one I find interesting. Number eight is motivation and personal goals. It's important depending how far you wanna go, for example, national tops or worldwide tops, some people are naturally talented and some people naturally get less nervous when on a good pace and some people just naturally improve more quickly. But that'll only get you so far. Motivation is definitely key since if you're motivated, then you're going to be dedicated to keep going. And if you're both motivated and dedicated, you're also going to keep persevering. 
Motivation is important. You shouldn't force yourself to do something since you're simply not going to want to, and that'll make improving harder if not impossible. So don't set your target too high when you're starting off, as that is a major motivation crusher. Number nine, learn more than one track. This might sound contradictory to number seven on this list. Avoid sticking to learning just a single track early on. One of the guys we asked recommends branching out and trying each track, since you're going to miss some subtle game knowledge if you were just to focus on that one and only track from early on. I like to take my time, but time is what you're always chasing. Number 10. Learn and visualize the world record strats. Once you feel comfortable with the mechanics, for example Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, once you've mastered fire hopping and demon sliding, apply the world record strat to what you know. An example for this is when I myself asked Galaxy for help on my Neo Bowser city record. I knew that in certain straits I was supposed to fire hop, but the way in which I did it would differ greatly each individual run. Now I know where I'm supposed to release which super mini turbo for example, in what order to fire hop, and exactly how much demon slides I should be able to squeeze in and how that differs from lap 1 compared to lap 2 for example. Same with coin strats. All in all, you want to have your run mapped out before you even start the race. One way to do this is just to close your eyes and visualize your complete run. Number 11 is a really interesting one. Play some hardcore competitive online races. So not too long ago I did a couple mogis and halfway through one of the guys told me in chat, you know when you asked me for that time trial advice? Well, yeah, this is your answer. I'm guessing what he meant by that is that the extreme chaos of an online race gets you in such a state that there's no time for doubts or negativity. It's a specific kind of flow where you just get sucked into a race and you have no choice but to perform. Also when there's 11 racers around you trying to shell you to a halt, it almost makes a normal time trial run seem like a soothing meditation. Now number 12, our personal MK roadmaps advice. Time trial in turns against a buddy on the couch. There's something so magical to passing a controller back and forth and battling each other right there and then. You can share a laugh and trash talk while also rooting for your buddy. Watch out for sweaty palms though, no one wants a moist controller in their hands. Even though one might argue even this is part of the charm. Number 13, practice. Practice, 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 practice. That's one we heard from basically everyone. One of the guys literally replied with, Practice. Hundreds upon thousands of hours of practice to get you to the very, very top. And that's it. We hope this was useful for you. If so, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And we will see you later.